Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Kay, and this is the next lecture in this fluid dynamics module. And this lecture is all about fluid momentum. Okay, so what I'm going to cover in this lecture, I'm going to talk about fluid momentum and how to derive it from first principles. From that, you then, you'll then be able to determine the forces which are produced um, by a flow, or they're acting on the flow, and also, um, more importantly, which is used for quite a large range of applications, for example, turbines, uh, the reaction forces um, that's on um, on a solid object um, created by the flow. I also give a brief overview of lift and drag. Okay, so we're going to kind of derive um, the momentum forces um, considering this uh, nozzle as an example. So if we look at the nozzle over here, we've got fluid entering um, a nozzle with velocity c1, and we're just going to assume it's incompressible. So from continuity, we know that the volumetric flow rate into this nozzle is going to be the same coming out. And because the nozzle is uh, narrowing in diameter, C2 must be greater than C1. And as I say, it's a fixed mass flow rate going through it. So as I say, from continuity, C2 must be greater than C1. Now, if the velocity is increasing as it goes um, from point 0.1 on the inlet to point 0.2 on the outlet, then it must be accelerated as it goes um, through this nozzle. And we can calculate the acceleration because if we know the exit velocity, the final velocity and the initial velocity, and divide that by the time it takes to get from point 0.1 to point 0.2, then that gives us the acceleration. Now, if we know the acceleration, um, we know from Newton's second law that if we know the mass, the force times the force is equal to mass times acceleration. So here we've got mass times acceleration, and acceleration we've defined as the change in velocity with respect to time. And we know that mass divided by time is the mass flow rate. So therefore, the force that's acting onto this um, fluid is the mass flow rate times the change in velocity. Or if you like, this can be written as the change in momentum with respect to time. So to say, this will create, a, or there's a force that's acting on the fluid. So that um, momentum force that we just derived that's the force that's acting on the fluid. Okay, so uh, the force is mass flow rate times um, the, the final velocity minus the initial velocity. But that's the force that's acting on the fluid. If we're interested in what's actually happening um, in terms of the nozzle, the reaction force, the force that we need to keep this um, you know, that's acting on this force. So if the force is pushing, there's a force pushing the fluid forward, then the force that's acting on the, the nozzle is the reaction force, okay? And the reaction force has to be equal and opposite um, to the force that's on the fluid. So therefore, the reaction force um, you know, on the nozzle is um, equal and opposite to the fluid, so it's m minus that. So it makes sense if the, the fluid is um, traveling through the nozzle from left to right, then the force is trying to push the nozzle back. You know, if you think about a, a hose pipe, for example. And then to hold the, the nozzle stationary, you need to create an equal and opposite force to that as well. 